Thanks for joining us, everyone. Look, first off, just I suppose, you know, you're no longer sort of the new, the young one anymore. Do you feel like more of an established kind of England player these days? Yeah, I think I've been here a while now, so I think I've sort of got the gist of how it works and everything. And yeah, we've got some amazing youngsters coming up. So yeah, I definitely have had that taken off me now, which I'm starting to feel my age a little bit. Don't say things like that. <laughs> I feel like it in football. <laughs> Let's not dig down into that because we're all, the rest of us are going to feel very depressed. But, um, <laughs> But do you feel as though you're, because you've been in great form for the last sort of, what, six, seven months in terms of just feel like momentum's building. Do you feel like making that breakthrough at international level is the next thing for you to sort of tick off the list? I think as well as I've, yeah, been sort of for the last six, seven months, been, I've been enjoying my football. I think that could change. For, I need to keep focused on that as well. But of course, yeah, I'd love to play for my country. That's what we're all here for. But we're very lucky. We have a very talented team and I think, the competition we have here and back at Chelsea is only going to bring the best out of me. So for what I can control, yeah, I'm going to try my best. But whatever else happens, I don't know. Someone else you know very well is back in the England squad, Frank Kirby. How pleased are you to see her back here? Yeah, so happy for her. And I think so happy to have her back at Chelsea as well. She's, she's a special, unique player. I think she's... Yeah, the things she can do on the ball and the way she can just run a game sometimes, is it's really special. So... Very lucky to have her both here and at Chelsea uh, and hopefully she can stay fit and yeah, provide us some great moments over the season. Do you think you've missed her? At England or at yeah. Chelsea? It, well, both, but I meant Brisbane and England. Um, I think we have amazing players that sort of, we have a wealth of talent so that other, it gives other people an opportunity to play and I think that's been mass, massive and those players have massively stepped up. I do think she's, she is unique and that she can, she's, can produce that moment of magic but we also have other players that have different like specialties but can do that. But you'd never say no to having her in the squad. Like You'd always want her there as well as the other amazing players we have. Um, so, yeah, it's been nice to have her back. England come into these games against Belgium, not often we say this, off the back of a defeat. How important is it, A, to get this back on track, and B, with Olympic qualification on the line, how important are these games? Massively important, but I think no matter what game you'd play for your country, it's massively important. Um, but yeah, like you said, we had a, yeah, not what we'd want at the end of last camp, but sort of excited to start these games and hopefully put that right. And also the, the games last camp, although they didn't, the last one didn't go the way we wanted, we've had some amazing learnings from them and hopefully we can implement that this camp and Belgium have shown they're an amazing team. So yeah, it'll be difficult, but yeah, one we're looking forward to. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, Anton. Any questions from the floor? Yep, we'll go to Jeff. Hi. Hi, yeah. Um, you've got Belgium home and away. Mm -hmm. What is it like playing the same team so quickly? Um, yeah, I think it is pretty... You don't do it all the time. Um, you kind of do it in Champions League if you're having a sort of home and away leg. So it's, it's something we are a little bit used to, but I think at international level it doesn't happen too often. Um, so there's advantages and disadvantages to it. I think it's really good that you get to have the first game, you'll have learnings and you'll straight away be able to implement it in the next game. Uh, and also for the analysis, we can sort of train in the same team for the whole time we're here and sort of work in really detail what we want to do. So yeah, it is interesting, but it's, it's neither good nor bad really. It is just the way it's gone, I think. How has 2023 been for you, both domestically and internationally? Has this been one of your favourite years? Um, I mean, it's when I look at the year, it's, well, kind of halfway through it, I feel, well, actually, we're close to the end of it, but it doesn't feel like that. Um, but, yeah, it has been good for me, and I've, I've really enjoyed playing, I've really enjoyed my football, and I think, yeah, Chelsea's given me over the however long I've been there, I've sort of, they've supported me really well, and I've been able to improve, and, yeah, this season I've really enjoyed it, both domestically and for my country, and hopefully I continue enjoying it. You have Emma Hayes at, at club level, Serena Wiegmann and at international level, two of the coaches that are considered to be two of the best around. Do you feel blessed to be able to learn from those? And are, are there many similarities between them? Yeah, I think I've said it before that it's, it's amazing that you have two really strong female coaches and hopefully we can get more female coaches to be at that level. But I think, yeah, I'm very, very lucky that I come away and I have Serena and at club I have Emma as well and they're both equally so experienced and 
real drivers of the women's game as well. Um, but I think it is nice as well that it's you always have differences between club and country, and I think those differences exist sort of in the managers as well. So it, it is refreshing that you can sort of get different viewpoints on football and sort of there's a way we want to play at Chelsea and there's a way we want to play at England. And But yeah, so you do... They are incredible people, I think, and what they've achieved in the women's game is amazing. You talked about not when you first came in about not being the new kid on the block anymore. So, do you find yourself passing on your experience to the players that are coming into the squad for the first time and trying to make them feel as welcome as possible? As I'm guessing, when you came in, everybody did that with you. Yeah, I think I'm aware because it wasn't too long ago. Like I, I can really put myself in their shoes and know how it feels. So. Yeah, for sure, try and help them. But also they're equally experienced at international level from the youth pathways as well. So it's not like it's brand new to them. So for sure, and they all play with their club teammates as well. So for sure, I'll help them. And I definitely know how they feel, but they're also very experienced as well. And they are coping brilliantly. Thanks, Jeff. Yes, we'll go to Don. Yeah, that's OK. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Hi, Neve. Um, you might have seen this week Arsenal came in for some criticism for a, a team photo which was taken. All, all 27 players in that were, were white. They've come out with a statement of their own and, and they said that they don't feel necessarily that the women's team at the moment represents the, the club and the communities that support it. Do you feel that there's a, a problem with diversity of access within the grassroots and the professional women's game? Uh, I, think, I think right now you're kind of seeing it at the top, but I think when you look at when in times gone by, yeah, we've probably not had the access in place and we've probably failed at some point. But I think right now, the things that have been put in place, you might not see them right now, uh, sort of the progress. But I do believe that there's things in place that in the future, hopefully it will be more representative of the society we live in. So I, I have hope that for the future with the things that the FA have set up, but also the clubs across the country in terms of access at grassroots level, Hopefully then showing that at first team level, hopefully it will yeah, be more representative in the future. It definitely feels like something that needs to start at the grassroots level and youth football for it mm -hmm. to then feed through to the professional game, doesn't it? Yeah, I think across all levels, it, you can't just do one without the other. And I think that's a great way that they're, they are all linked. We've all been through every different stages and there needs to be sort of across every level. It needs to sort of be addressed. And I think it is being addressed and hopefully when one sort of improves, the other will improve uh, simultaneously, so yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, we'll go to Catherine. Hi, Neve. Um, I just wondered how much you think you've kind of come on in the last year, because um, obviously start of the season, you've got three assists in, in the league already. feels like you've really nailed down that left-back spot at Chelsea when perhaps before you were sort of switching sides, switching positions, but it feels like you've kind of really comfortable in that position now. Yeah, I think I have been used to sort of switching between, but that's not to say that... I. I didn't feel at home in the position I was playing. I, I was very used to sort of doing that and I also enjoyed that as well. But yeah, I think I've been working really hard the past, well, I've always kind of worked hard, but like it's, it is nice to sort of see a little bit of progress and yeah, to sort of play more regularly in one position is nice because you can have some consistency across the people you're playing with and sort of the demands of that role. Um, so for sure, I've enjoyed the start of the season. Thanks, Catherine. Go to Tom at the back. Thank you. Hi, Neve. Um, oh, yeah. as, as we've been talking about, you're not one of the kids anymore. So can you just tell us how excited you are about the kids that are coming through? How, how good are the young talent that are coming into the squad? Yeah, I think it's as the women's game grows, I think the pool of grassroots players is going to get bigger, which means that the top, top talents are going to get even better because the competition is going to get higher. And I think you can see that at domestic level and at club level, the pathway progress is getting better. And I think... The players we have coming through now are top, top talents and they're already playing for their clubs and I think it's exciting for the future of football in this country, domestically and a country. But yeah, for sure, Grace and Chiara are coming in. They've started really well um, domestically and yeah, you can see from training as well, it's nice to train with them and sort of see what they're about. How quickly have those two settled into camp this week? Well, we haven't actually been here too long, but yeah, they've, as, as I've said before, they have their club mates that they know as well and through the pathways we kind of know each other as well. So, yeah, they've settled in really well and they seem pretty comfortable and hopefully they can express themselves on the pitch as well and sort of show what, why they've been selected, really. 
What, as a squad, what do you do when a new player comes in as sort of an initiation? What are they got to be braced for for the next few days? We're, we're actually pretty, I think we're pretty nice. It's just sort of like, you've done well to get selected and we're not going to sort of punish you now. Um, so yeah, there's not actually too much. Obviously there's a bit of ribbon back and forth, but at the same time we know how massive it is to get selected and like how much pride they feel and we feel every time as well. So it, it's more of a well done, like this is a really good moment for you. And on a much more serious note, and I hope, hope you don't mind me asking you this rather than putting um, Grace and Kiara on the spot in a minute, but um, last week we spoke to Serena about the situation in Brussels with the terror attack last week, and she said she felt quite safe to be going there. She felt that there were conversations that had reassured her. So I just wondered, as you as players, have, do you feel safe going there? Have you, have you been reassured by conversations and kind of ha have you talked about that situation at all? To be honest, personally, I, I haven't. I don't know enough information about what's going on, but when I'm here I always feel safe and I really trust that the staff that we have are really on it and sort of thinking about things in advance and I've always felt safe when I'm here and I know that we have amazing people here that sort of go above and beyond in their job so although I've not spoken about it and I can't really say too much about it I, I would feel absolutely safe if, if they say it's fine to go I have absolute trust in them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks Tom. Any other questions? If not we'll call it a day there. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Nate. Thank you, guys. Thank you